What's up, everybody? Welcome to your number one podcast coming out of the Carolinas. I am the innovator, the emancipator, the originator, Jesse Mitchell. And this is Straight No Chase with Jesse Mitchell coming out of the 26 live from the icebox. And we in here. Tonight, I got to start off with this Nickelodeon documentary, Lord Jeeves. What's going on? What is, but Marvin Gaye say, what is going what on? in the world? If you're around my age or you like I me, mean, you grew up in the 90s on this, your child, that's your childhood. And if you haven't seen this, it's a documentary they got that's out called uh, Quiet on the Set uh, about Dan Schneider. I believe that's his name, Mr. Schneider. Yeah, Mr. Touchy Feely, uh, Mr. Uh, whatever they want to call him. Like, this is out of, man, he, this, from all the, the stuff, a lot of the skits they was writing in the writers' room was had all these sexual connotations to them for the kids. There's nothing but kids in the work environment, and they laughing. The one they had one scene where they squirted goo on the girl's face, and they all laughing to set. Told me it's a cum shot, and this is what they yelling around the set. The girl told me she was a kid. She didn't know what that meant. Then when she got older, she found out what that meant, and she was like, "Oh, she remembered." It was like, "Oh, that's what that meant." Like, like what kind of shit? And they laughing. They had one girl that called uh, Hillary Taint or something Taint. You know, the taint is that piece of skin in between the buttock, in between the butt, the, the butt, right. and the nut, or wherever, you, or, or the clit, or whatever you want to call it, but right. the, the taint. Right. 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 So, the girl name was that taint, and they knew that, and told everybody, don't tell nobody that, and they sit back and laugh every time the shit come on, and like, it's so funny and shit, and these kids, y'all doing this too, and having sitting up for this, like, this is crazy, yo. I'm like, how are people not seeing this and letting this ride all these years? For 20 years, it went on. Gave to, get, gave to do the awards and all types of shit, and the accolades, and he was the man. Dan Snyder, then the pedophile, then he had three or four pedophiles up in there just taking booty. Like, what the hell going on? Wow. Just free reign. Just if he if he if he was your buddy and he groomed you, you'll get the roles. If not, you was ostracized. Like one black kid, his mama seen seen the uh the blitz coming. She saw the writing on the wall. They walk around with the dude pickle guy. He's a pedophile. He can't he walking around giving me pickles all day for them to suck on and chew on. <laughs> Sticking, sticking, they got a little hole in the door, like a glory hole, and he's sticking pickles through the door, people getting the pickles and shit. Not the glory hole. Yeah, so the mama like, yo, what's going on? Y'all don't see this? Like, what the hell is going on? Yo, they like, nah, just be cool. Be cool, yo, if you want your son to stay, you know, be cool type shit. And she like, yo, like, they got Ariana Grande. She holding the damn potato. They talking about, talking about I can get juice from the potato, and she like this, trying to juice the potato. Talking about she juicing the potato. <laughs> what the hell is happening here, yo? Like, what the hell? And how are we not noticing this? How are we realizing this? Right. Like, what the hell? Like, and so the little black kid, he, he didn't he didn't get ass back for season three. Because Mom Dukes is making too much noise. You got to go. Uh-uh, you making too much of a stink. We uh uh-uh. We don't do that. One of the writers who was making a stink, yeah, you got clipped too. Scissors. <laughs> get you up out of there now. Like, man, out of control. These, all these shows, we watch all that. Uh, whatever the different shows, man. It was just so... Quiet on the set. Like I said, you got, y'all got to watch it, man. It's out of control. Nickelodeon. I don't know. Like, and, and I think the guy Dan Snyder is still out. Then the dude, oh, my God. Then the dude, the pedophile who raped all the boy from Drake and uh, Drake and Josh, he got 16 months. 16 months. What they gave him. <laughs> Big Meech still in jail. And they ain't get him for nothing but conspiracy. Shout out to Meech. I'm like, God damn. Really? Right. My man is the booty wrangler. He gets 16 months. And y'all got Meech still in lockup. For conspiracy. What kind of shit is that? Make it make sense, y'all. Uh, uh, the other dude, he didn't get that much time. He got like five or six years. The one, uh, the first pedophile they called on Nickelodeon. He didn't get that much time either. Like, how y'all, for, for having a damn, a couple grams of, of coke or crack, you going to jail for 20 years. But for taking booty, you getting three, getting a, 16 months in a, in a year. Or five years and shit. What kind of shit is that? How that make sense? What kind of, how is that, the, the, the judicial system. Right. <laughs> how does that make sense, yo? Please make it God. Y'all gotta say, y'all gotta watch the documentary. It's crazy. Bananas. You know, they got the Freak Nick documentary coming out too now. That coming, that just dropped today. Yeah, that's kind of scary. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that one. Like, yo, you gonna be on it, Vic? They got shots of you on it? <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay, okay. It's scary for other people, though. I was too young back then. I wanted to go, but I was too young to go. By the time I got old enough to go, they hadn't cut it for people getting messed up, beat up, and raped, and all types of stuff was happening by then. Right. But, you know, when it first kicked off, it was, it was the joint. Everybody was gone. So yeah, they didn't, but they didn't want that to get out though. You want everybody to know you were doing a lot of sneaky freaky, huh? And you want them to know how you was busting it wide open for the camera, huh? Hey, you you, you you only live once, baby. Which ain't true. You live every day. You only die once. But you know you got to live. <laughs> so hey, you was living life. You were young. You know, you just made some mistakes. That's all. 
And you don't know what's on the, what clips they got, what footage they got, or who. Because everybody had the little portable handheld cameras back then with the videotape right in there. You won't know till you see it. Oh, they watched it. They watched it, trust me. It dropped earlier today, I'm sure. Because it dropped on the 21st. So trust me, they've been watching, glued in, trying to see if it's a clip. I told my sister she's going to be on it. I know she was down there at the Freak Nick. <laughs> at the Freak Nick. Wow. Down in the A shut the door. You see, uh, on BMF, they had Tupac at the Freak Nick down there. Dude looked like me. <laughs> yeah. Tell me he Tupac. Are oh, you crazy? Like you. <laughs> or somebody else. You don't look nothing like this. Six pack, not Tupac. Or <laughs> somebody. Right. Shit. Uh, the hell? They be casting anybody to play Tupac. Yeah, they got a line. Everybody want to play Tupac? Hey, come on. You come on in. They don't care who they who playing. No. Put a band down. Hey, put a band down in the nose ring on him and put it, get him in here. Yep. <laughs> Just like that. That's it. <laughs> like, yo, it's crazy. Man. Shout out to Bruno Mars. They say Bruno Mars got $50 million in gambling debt to the MGM casino. You heard about that? $50 million in gambling debts. But now he's going to do a $90 million residency. It's going to take care of the debt. Now, he's probably going to be 105 by the time he finishes that residency, residency now. <laughs> He gonna be tapping and dancing his ass off, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're gonna leave the door open for him, but I'm just saying. He's, he, going he's, like, he's locked in. Like what well, my money back said, like sellers, they locked in, okay? Yeah. So, but you know, so I guess he's taking care of his that way. So when you got that option, I guess you can take care of it that way. But a lot of people. Uh, getting hooked on this gambling, been hooked on gambling has been a problem for years, you know. I gamble a little bit, but you know, since I got papered out, you know, I really haven't had any desire to gamble personally. Right. You know, I'm, I just don't see the person of when I'm getting over five figures a month to risk a couple hundred dollars to get a thousand dollars or a couple hundred. I just don't really understand. I don't really see the need for that right now. Right. But I mean, you know, I might, and I, and I ain't definitely ain't going to bet big and blow and blow no money and I just really got paid. Oh, hell no. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen either. Uh, but a lot of people was calling into the radio talking about it and stuff. Was talking about gambling addiction, how they lost everything and they are hundred seventy thousand dollars in debt, two hundred thousand dollars in debt with gambling addiction. You know, they just here recently made all these gambling sports gambling uh, sports betting sites legal here in North Carolina. A lot of people going crazy. A lot of people lying to me. It's more addictive than crack. And you see all these girls, women, men, kids, whoever talking about they got their picks in, they missed their parlay and all that. And I'm just like, man, y'all just. Throwing money down the rabbit hole. Just throwing money down the rabbit hole. Like, you put all this money in hoping to win, and the house going to win. Always. Another addiction. That's how they do it. it, People like to win money. Money, People like to win. Winning is addictive. It's hard hard when you you win, and especially when you're getting that paper, and you think about what you can do with that paper. And all right, this time I'm going to hit. If I get this, I can do this, and I can do that. All right, now I'm going to take this and do that. Oh, you have so many plans now. Until she come with that table, that hand, and Break it back. Oh, uh, are you going down again? <laughs> and just look at you. <laughs> so she look at you. Now you be like, you heifer. This heifer talking about some goddamn bitch. <laughs> here, yeah, I'm going down again. Yeah, and they rakes it up quick too. Now they don't play around in the casino. Now you know what I'm saying. But you know them down. They got on the phone now. They're going crazy. And y'all gotta watch that. Yeah, don't, don't, don't lose the house. Don't bet the whole house and lose that. You lose your shirt. Trying to win a couple dollars now. That ain't going to be good. At all. At all. I seen uh, another post. I've seen a few clips. Everybody been talking about. People been talking about these youngins. I don't know why y'all. I, I, that's why I don't talk basketball with y'all. Because y'all just say crazy things. But I keep seeing y'all talking about Wilt Chamberlain. His 100-point game was fake. And him, them saying he benched 500 pounds was fake. And they lying about his stats and all that. Y'all need to pick up a history book or something because they ain't lying to inflate no black man's stats in the 1960s and 70s to make him the best. I don't know what y'all think this is, but that ain't happening, okay? <laughs> no way that they, they, they inflated uh, Bob Pettit or uh, one of them boys for the point point will. If that was the case, they had no choice. He was doing this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Then <laughs> you think these other players who playing against him ain't got no pride? They just don't give a damn, huh? They're going to lie and say, yeah, he did all this stuff too against us, yeah, but yeah, and that's cool. I hooped. I damn sure ain't going to lie. I'm going to tell you right now. I know he ain't do that. <laughs> I don't give a damn how many times he slanted. Nah, I ain't see it. <laughs> now, you think they all going to admit it? Yeah, he was doing this and he was doing that. And he didn't really do that? Come on, man. 
Like, how many people is in on these lies? Like, come on now. <laughs> come on, I understand y'all don't believe and all that, and then this new era is supposed to be so great where they don't play any defense or do anything, but come on, man. Let's stop it. Stop the nonsense. Wilt was dominant, dropping buckets on your head, how you want it, nuts in the face. And that's just what it is, the legend. Come on, man. I seen this uh, post. A guy was talking about how he don't tip no more. Say, because he, he tips when he gets good service, and nowadays you don't get good service, so he don't do no tipping. He feels like the restaurant should pay the uh, waitresses the, the right wage or charge appropriately to pay them the right wage so you don't have to tip. Now, you know, tipping is our option. Some places put, it in the, put the gratuity into the bill already. I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> but you know, tipping you know tipping is an option. You know, normally you want to tip, and you know because you know you feel like they they don't make that much, which ain't your problem. But you know, <laughs> I personally I tip based off service. I'm just saying. You know, what I mean, if you give me good service, I'm gonna give you a good tip. Right. If you don't give me good service and I, I didn't enjoy the food, I'm not tipping you. I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, you know, I say you know do I, I move accordingly. I can say you know hey. The other night we went to go eat. I gave the girl a $200 tip because she gave us a great service. Right. Didn't have to work. My cup stayed full. Run it, my cup runneth over. Run it over. <laughs> Come on now. I ain't to worry about nothing. Everything was <laughs> replenished. She came on time. Everything, everything was hot when it came to the table. We didn't have to worry about nothing. Did cool. I'm going to tighten you up. You know what I mean? Get you right. right. The other night we went out to uh, another restaurant and it was from, from sugar to shit. <laughs> so I didn't leave a tip at all. Yeah, that's just how it was. I paid the bill and I left. Right. So I mean, you know. Nowadays, you know, you know, quality of service ain't hardly worth for shit nowadays, you know. And that's why the guy was saying he don't tip no more, period. But, you know, I just say, you know, tip accordingly. I say, if you, if you want to get tipped, if you're a server out there, you want to get tipped, hey, you need to bring quality of service. Keep the cup, run us over. Yeah. <laughs> hey. That's all I'm saying now. Homeowners. Man, y'all got to tune in for this one. Homeowners out there and these real estate people. Got to talk about these squatters' rights. They got squatters' rights. Now, they got in uh, a lot of different cities, they're different now. Now, in, I believe, New Jersey, they said it's 21 years for squatters' rights. West Virginia is 15 years. In New York, it's only 30 days. And some other cities, but New York, mostly, I know for sure, it's only 30 days squatters' rights, which means a vagrant or a homeless person can move into a vacant house. If they're there for 30 days, they got rights now. As long as they can produce a bill when the police come or somebody come, which they can make the damn self, now they got rights to that house. It was a girl, a lady in the news. She recently inherited a house from her parents. So her grandparents died, left her house. She goes to the house. This squatter's in the damn house. She called the police. They arrest her. Because <laughs> the squatters have been in so damn long, they got rights. So if y'all ain't checking on these properties and y'all got, y'all think they're just going to be sitting there cool, y'all need to check on them because y'all might got somebody living in there. And if they live in there for a certain amount of time, depending on what state you're in, they can have rights to your property. But now all these investments and all this money you got on paper, you're talking about worth this much. You ain't because you ain't got the rights to it no more. They didn't snatch the money. You. <laughs> Throw this cut. Come on, no lie. Y'all getting to this real estate and homeowners and y'all buying these different homes and trying to be all private renters and different stuff, you know. I ain't got time for all that. Be chasing up nobody and making sure they how the house is uh making it's right for them and making sure they pay me the money on time. I'm cool on all that. I don't want to do nothing but sit back and collect my money and smoke my spliff. <laughs> but you know, hey, like I said, y'all got hey, y'all is doing man, y'all man. So hey, y'all got the day. I'm make sure y'all checking on these properties now because if y'all not, they are gonna snatch them from you. Hey. I seen another post where a guy was talking about, uh, I believe it was Russ, shout out to Russ, how these artists uh, and these companies out here fake streams and numbers nowadays. It's been going on. That's nothing new. Why? Think about it. It's smart. Why would I not? If I got the money, why would I not go buy a stream or pay for a bunch of streams of my album and all the money coming back to me anyway? anyway. And once, you, once the public sees that I have a million streams, uh, two million streams. Now they're gonna want to check this out and listen to it. Now that now that I'm getting more streams, which is more revenue coming to me. They've been doing that since back in the day when CD it was CDs. They don't say who buys the CDs. They just say you sold as many CDs. So if I got if I got M's or I got six figures, I'm gonna send my mama and my boy and my pop and partner them down there to go buy all the CDs at the store. <laughs> so now when the numbers come back, oh he he sold uh five hundred thousand this first week. Now I'm getting awards, more money, incentives, and all this because of that. Yeah, that's what they do. 
Just like when you see all these comments and all these likes on these posts online, and then you go to these comments, you don't see any comments, or you go to the profiles that do comment, and they don't have any followers or anything, and because it's uh, AI. It's not real people. But it looks good when you look at it. So, okay, I'm going to check this out, too, because uh, 50,000, 100,000 people watch this. Let me see what they like this. Let me see what they look like. Boom. That's a stream or a like for them. So, yeah, it's all a business. It's part of the game. So, ain't nothing new. Yeah, they faking them streams. Hey, if you had the money and you was an artist and who upcoming on, you do it too. <laughs> you just don't have the funds, I guess. You know, hey, you know. Right. Yeah, even like some of the major ones. If I got a million streams and I boosted up to two million, who gonna who gonna question it? You know what I'm saying? So, oh yeah, it's definitely been going on. There ain't nothing new. So yeah, you gotta peep that and understand that you know. But it's part of the business though. Seen another post about people not knowing how to play spades. Who out there still don't know how to play no spades? Come on, y'all. Seriously, especially in the black community, I don't know how to play no spades. Like, come on, this is it's, it's, it's a household game. Like, it's the greatest game, you know? You come in, you get your partner, you know what I mean? And first of all, anybody who wants some, you don't want none of me and my, my, my partners. My brother, sister, whoever I need to get. I got, I got a few of them I can roll with, and whoever wants some, hey, just let you know you can have it if you want it. If you want it. Hey. But anyway. How y'all still don't know how to play no spades? Like, we used to play spades $100 a hand. Like, it's 13 of each suit. 13, everybody get 13 cards. You got to watch the board. Pay attention to what's been played. And, and follow suit. And don't cut your partner. How hard is that? It ain't rocket science, baby. If your partner's cutting the suit, what is cutting? He don't have no more of that suit. So now he's playing spades on top of that suit to win the book. You play that suit when you have the lead. It's called feeding your partner. It ain't hard, baby. <laughs> if it's two jokers out there and you got the dudes, because we playing Joker, Joker, Deuce, Ace. All that Deuce, Deuce shit ain't is out the door. Like, we ain't doing that. We doing Joker, Joker, Deuce, Ace now. So if you got the, the Deuce and the two jokers are still out there, don't play the Deuce. <laughs> it ain't rocket science. <laughs> it's going to get his head bust. Come on, y'all. y'all we got to get together, people. Because y'all come around me, or y'all come to a straight no chase phone so we get to playing spades. I'm going to try to break the tape. I'm listening to that right now. I'm going to get to slapping them. <laughs> I'm, I'm running them. Tell you, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to damn break my wrist in that damn thing, guy. Huh? <laughs> oh, play around about the spades now. Hey, the spades go hard now. A lot of relationships that ended over spades now. Fights, all types of stuff happened over the spades table now. Well, I remember we used to play, like I said, we used to play for a hundred a hand when I was in the desert. Then if you get uh, 200 off the rip, that's a skunk. That's a, that's double. So now you got to play 200 off the rip and you play with one hand. <laughs> You talking about sick flipping tables and all that? We be sitting there laughing like here, getting paid. <laughs> count me out. Be a mad, be mad as you want to be. Just go ahead and count me out though. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Call her how you want. She gonna call me when she feel. <laughs> you dig? Mm-hmm. I be watching these basketball games too. This 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 is this, this is nonsense right here. Wears me down. Now this this uh unwritten rule where. We're up so many points, so we can't score anymore now. Or if you do, we want to fight now. That's the dumbest shit I ever seen or heard. And I, I was a ball. I played ball. Anybody know me know the deal. What kind of dumb shit is that? If you don't want me to slam on, you don't want me to dunk, play defense. And don't let me get an open dunk. Run back on defense. How about that? If you don't want me to get up 30 and score, don't let me get up 30. Like, it ain't rocket science. I don't got to stop playing if it's time on the clock because I'm up beating you so bad that you want to quit. What kind of dumb shit is that? And now you want to fight because you didn't play hard. <laughs> And you got beat bad. And you feel like I'm trying to show out. You damn right I'm trying to show out. <laughs> you mean? Then, well, really, you see, you know what I'm saying, sometimes in the pros, but I seen it in college. Like, come on, man. This dude in college might have just got in the game. Might not even get no bird. You know what I'm saying? He get a steal. Yeah, I'm going to slam. I get my, I'm get my points. What are you talking about? Just like in high school. I'm getting my name in the paper. What yeah, are you talking about? I just said I the bitch the whole game. He whipped me in the game at the end of the game. Yeah, if I get the rock, I'm shooting. Ain't no dribbling shit out. What you talking about? <laughs> If I hit my name in the paper, yeah. Well, like, come on, man. Stop this, man. Y'all got to stop this nonsense, man. Wanting to fight because you're getting your ass kicked. Come on, now. Play hard. It's a time on the clock for a reason. You playing the clock, not the person. So play to the clock run out. All this there, run written rules shit. You just, come on, man. Stop it, man. That's clown shit, man. Let's play ball, man. Play hard and get back to playing some real ball, man. That's suck Y'all on that sucker shit. You mad because they whooping you. you stop getting whooped. Shit, they ain't rocket science. <laughs> 
Do something at least run back down there, don't let him slam. Even even in our day, if you was getting, you ain't you ain't slamming. We first of all no home or pause, whatever you want to call it. We lay in the wood. You ain't you ain't uh, just going and just slamming. I don't give a damn what this is. Nah, hell no. Nah. You ain't highlighting on me. I don't care how much you up. We gonna take you out. But they when they lays when they run down and now now he want to win the meal and do whatever he want to do. Now you mad and you want to fight. Nah, don't get mad. Want to fight now? Nah, you should have wanted to fight when you start getting your ass cut by fifteen and thirty. That's when you should have been mad and wanting to fight. I don't know, man. It just, it just it just enrages me, man. It enrages me, man. I, I, I just don't get it, man. Like, what about like I said, if you a cat that don't get no burn, and you finally get in the game, and you get a little steal or get the shot, you supposed to not shoot it now because y'all winning? No, hell no. I hope, hope, hope I get. Hopefully, I'll get in during a meaningful game, and I'll be able to get a shot up. You crazy as hell. I seen the post the other day was talking about the. Um, all the little shows you used to watch with the grandma growing up, you knew who was raised by their grandma who didn't, from uh, Mama's Family, In the Heat of the Night. Uh, it was another show they showed, too, and Matlock. And I used to watch Matlock, Ooh, Matlock. vividly. Yeah. All, every episode of Matlock I used to watch. Like, before Law and Order, I was hooking, everybody knew I was hooking on Law and Order. That's my joint. It was Matlock. Matlock is... Hell, I ain't know that for years. And I was watching the show forever. And then one time I finally paid attention, because you know you don't look the same. He all fat and gray and shit. So one time I finally actually paid attention to the damn caption. It said Andy Griffith. Yeah. Oh shit, that's Andy Griffith. Damn, I've been watching the show all this time. I didn't know that was Andy Griffith. Yeah, that's cool. yeah from the Andy Griffith show with Ain't B and Opie. Yeah, that's him. So, uh, but yeah, so I watched Matlock. But the thing about Matlock that tripped me out is the black dude Conrad McMaster used to get his ass kicked every episode. Like every episode, like okay, I understand y'all. Got, you got the one brother on the show. <laughs> And, and the one brother, and that's cool. He got a role, you know what I mean? Because the brothers wasn't getting a lot of roles back then, now. Right. But why he got to get his ass whipped every episode? Every, and he's supposed to be your investigator, your uh, your security, or whatever. And he go out every episode, and get his ass cut. How the hell that makes sense? Like he can't, he'll never win the fight. Never. Like he can't beat nobody. Now. Everybody want to kick his ass every time, every episode. I'm talking about every episode he get whooped. I like yo, like come on, bro. Like this is this is crazy. Yeah, not every episode. Now that he can, he at least can beat up somebody. Like damn, now nah. how you an investigator, a private investigator, in security, and you can't whoop nobody? Just getting punished. That was my show, though. Matlock, though. Yeah, Matlock went hard, hard, hard. I seen a girl a post a girl made online that said she was going viral. She said a man will put his happiness aside for his woman, but a woman will put her man aside for her happiness. Mm. Man. She said a man will put his happiness aside for his woman, but a woman will put her ha- man aside for her happiness. Which is true. Yeah. Men, men bend and, and, and take concessions and all types of stuff all the time and deal with different things for the woman and because they want to be with this woman, make this stuff up, work, work with this woman. And then women, as soon as there's something to happen, they don't like they don't want, they're ready to roll or whatever. Deuces. Uh, it ain't going their way. It's the highway. All that. Come on, man. You know that. Women are selfish creatures. It's what it is. I love you, <laughs> but y'all are selfish. Y'all think about self. Y'all don't think about we. Y'all ain't thinking about the team, part of the team. Y'all think about what I need, what I want, my way. Why men think we, us, team. That's the difference. Don't shoot the message. I'm just keeping it bang. And I know this from experience. I'm just saying. Keeping it a stack. Also, you know, I know last week, a couple weeks ago, I made a little post about, you know, y'all was safe. You know, I ain't want your woman, and I got my lady, and all this, that stuff I was telling y'all, because guys was tripping and scared I wanted their woman. Well, things have changed. Uh, apparently, uh, I'm back looking for new talent now, so uh, I can't say you're safe now. <laughs> I just, I'm just sorry to tell you, you, you might not be safe now, because, uh... I'm just saying, if they toss it, I'm damn sure going to catch it, flip it, and smack it. <laughs> you dig? I'm just saying. Oh, man. I'm just saying. What the girls say? Big single. Like the girls say. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, yeah. You might want to be a little afraid now. I'm just saying. All right. You know, straight no taste don't lie to you. I like to keep it 100 with you. I love you. So, I'm going to keep it a stack. And we're going to wrap it up on that. As always, I am the innovator, the emancipator, the originator. This, has been, this has been Straight No Chase with Jesse Mitchell, your number one podcast coming out of the Carolinas. 
coming to a city near you, a living room near you, stay tuned.